the UK and, and this, this area is the home of the Fabian Society. The Fabian Society is all about socialism, um, hyper-leftism, and pushing a leftist culture systematically, slowly, steadily over time to change culture in, in such a way that um, speaks to their goals. And this is, that's all we're seeing right now. We're, we're seeing a, a slow move of cultural subversion, and I would say even inversion. We're getting to the point where we are being inverted to something other. We are no longer going to take the shape of a normal, healthy, natural human being. At least they aim to invert us in this way where we will be part machine. Not only will we be part machine, but we won't even be reproducing how, how we naturally would otherwise. And as with that, we will also have a different type of perspective, a, a completely reorganized uh, worldview where we will see the world in a very different way, a fantasy-like way, uh, moral relativism and all these things, basically hyper-postmodernism, if you will. Now, there is the post-postmodernism movement, um, some call it neo-postmodernism, which is interesting because what they do uh, is they argue against some of the illogical arguments of postmodernism, and they are right in many of those arguments, but the problem is they still claim to a lot of the leftism, which, which is an Ouroboros at the end of the day. So what I'm getting at is all of these philosophies, they just keep rolling over each other. They can renew and refine their ideals as much as they want, as long as they keep um, ignoring and um, aiming to negate God and, and, to, and to refute his importance and to, uh, to live in the flesh and these things, they will continue to fail. But the problem is they will continue to push this on us, on the believers, on those that want to uphold God's truth, those of us that want to, to, to live righteously and believe in what's right and condemn what's wrong so what i see is i get it it's like okay uh you guys can't come out and say you hate christians you can't come out and say you want to end christianity you can't do that just by law you you, you just can't do that so what they do is they aim to uh, undermine our values and it's, it's starting with morality um, and this can and in, in many cases does destroy one even a believer from the inside out if they can change your heart they can destroy you from the inside out and that's what that's what we're seeing right now an attack on morality an attack on order an attack on our hearts i, I notice that these are the these are the ways that they aim to to undermine our values and destroy our, our moral foundation by promoting immorality so much to the point where we become amoral where we're not necessarily immoral we're amoral there's just no standing there there's no no purpose for the idea of morality that's the goal but to get there they must inundate us with immorality to desensitize us that seems to be the case at the moment we understand uh, America is definitely not Christian nature in its pure sense. Okay, it's definitely been subverted in many ways, and it even began with many, uh, I'd say, secular humanist perspectives, even occultist and esoteric perspectives. We can look at, you know, some of the mind or, or thought leaders like John Locke, for instance, who, uh, or and Stuart Mill, all these guys, right? They all had a lot to do with. Americana and what became the American culture and we know very well that the culture is cannot be considered a, a Christian culture in that full strong accurate sense so I, I say it like this it's a secular humanism with a natural law or evolutionary moral order which has its roots in Christian moral foundations so they they claim like the typical secular humanist American would claim to a natural law or some type of evolutionary moral order like they believe we evolved right but really they can't really there's no accurate believable explanation for it so what we do know is that they, it has its roots in christian moral foundations so um secular humanism and atheism alike has always borrowed its usage usage of uh, moral law from the christian worldview in fact uh, the constitution and even the magna carta borrowed from the Christian worldview to establish moral argumentation. So what I'm getting at here is regardless of how skewed things have become, how subverted the culture is, at its root is the foundation of Christianity that gives it its basis in morality. It gives us its ability to say what is wrong and what is right. So yeah, so in order to subvert American Christian traditions in, in our culture, 
they had to undermine Americans understanding of morality just our understanding of it see if you are a Christian you have a Christian worldview you don't need someone to explain to you how, how morality works we have scriptures for that we have the Word of God we have God we have God's laws it's very simple for us we, be, we know how to behave we know how to, how to act we know what's right what's wrong now imagine if you can change someone's perspective on those things if you can subvert their understanding of morality then you open up a door for all types of things. In fact, you they, they become a vessel that you can then impute or you can then inject whatever you would like, right? You become open-minded, as they say. See, this has been the goal for a very, very long time. Uh, again, I'd say since about the late 50s, we have seen this, this movement of, of trying to just tweak your understanding of right and wrong. So they had to undermine Americans' understanding of morality, right and wrong, acceptable, what's unacceptable, uh, what's natural, what's abnormal, these questions. We're dealing with this heavily today if you think about it. Just, just stating something being wrong is almost frowned upon. You almost have to write a thesis with all types of evidence to prove something's wrong. And I'm not, I'm not saying like, of course we have to prove things are right and wrong, but I'm saying very obviously wrong things. You have to nearly write a thesis to get the average person to agree with you. But it's ideology, it's cultural ideology that has pretty much uh, uh, usurped the idea of truth and biological sciences, these types of things, right? It's like everything is ideologically moving now. And this goes right back to Fabianism. This goes right back to Gramsci and his whole idea of, of um, uh, cultural hegemony. This idea of, okay, you know, you want to change people, you want to change society, you have to change the culture. It's not about money. It's not about eco economics. You know, you got all these guys like Boyce Watkins and, you know, uh, all of these types. Uh, Tariq Nasheed, you got all these guys, right, that are, are trying to talk about money, talk about economics, and it's all about learning how to use money, and they have no understanding of philosophy, they have no understanding of culture, they have no understanding of psychology, they don't realize that if people don't have a foundation in what is right and what is wrong, and how to interact with other human beings, how to operate righteously, orderly in this in this world on this earth if you don't have that you're never you're never gonna really be able to create a legacy now you may be real greedy you may be very narcissistic and be able to handle numbers and become rich is that your goal in life well if that's your goal in life you clearly you know you're on you're playing for the wrong team and you're on the other side and you're just part of the whole de destruction of, of humanity but for those that really want to to learn how to live right and live happily and have and have a fruitful and a, and a, a, a rewarding life, you know, it's more than money. It's more than just being economically stable. You know, it, it has to do with with spiritual things. It has to do with with the condition of the heart. You know, it has to do with with the way you actually live, what you believe in, your your value system, your your set of ethics. You know, what you stand for integrity, dignity, these types of things. Most people today don't talk about that at all. It's all about, you know, getting money, owning homes, you know, getting an education, you know, having this, having that. See, this is part of this, this, um, this American secular humanist culture that we've been indoctrinated with over the past several decades. This is what it produces. It produces empty people with a lot of things. And, and they become smart through their or should we say they become educated through their schools and you know uh, they, they make a little money and, and they think they can tell people how to live and really very little fruit comes out of it this is what we see today we see a majority of these types we don't have any real stand-up authentic people giving you truth anymore like on you know, I'm talking about on the main stage here I, I know there's a bunch of little guys out here doing good work I mean, on the main stage, you know, the, the guys with all the following, the guys with all with all the eyes and ears. It's like they got it all wrong. And I'm not saying I got it all right. I just know a few things that they're doing wrong. And I know some things that they're missing. And if you could kind of get more of a deeper understanding of some of these important things, maybe you can see a little clearer. Maybe you'll be a little more successful in helping out the world, helping out people grow. 
and the, and, and the root of that, its, it's, it's base is truth, okay, truth, authentic truth, that's what it is, and that's through the Most High God, and it's only through the Christian worldview, there's no other way to experience this and, and to achieve this, period, it's not just morality, you know, some people say, well, I could just be moral, well, you won't be able to, because you have no foundation to to give you that. You you have no foundation to to show you and, and to guide you in that obedient fashion. You 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 will eventually fall on your own flesh. You will eventually fall on your own knowledge, and then you will start to rationalize and reason out your own form of morality. Then your morality will break into pieces. It will become stratified and. You'll, you'll pick certain parts, you know, you'll, your morality, it's like cognitive dissonance, right? It's, it's because uh, the fallen man, uh, a secular man, cannot uphold true godly morality without God. It just doesn't work that way. Yeah, uh, without a moral people, this is, this is important here. Without a moral people, the freedom and independence of self-governance cannot exist. Okay, so we want to call ourselves individualistic, you know, the individualistic American society. You know, we, we want to be able to dictate our own lives, not saying outside of God, but saying outside of the state. We don't want the state coming down on us. We don't want, you know, some oligarch telling us how to live and what to do. Okay, we, we want to live free lives. We want to be liberated in that sense to where we can make decisions. We can build homes. We can own businesses. We could grow food for our families. We could educate our own kids if we want. We can choose to live how we want and make the decisions on our own, especially for our children. We don't need a state telling us how to raise our kids and all of this. That's called freedom and independence. And that freedom and independence is part of self-governance, okay? This is how we've come into this world as Americans or those of, of Western traditions, mainly. Uh, we have this idea of self-governance, and that's based in a moral people. Without a moral people, the freedom and independence of self-governance cannot exist because a moral people keep order and display consistency in healthy behavior. See, we have a rubric for healthy behavior, and by way of obedience, we keep that in order. Now, this isn't to say we don't fall, you know, we, we may, you know, get out of pocket one minute. You know what I'm saying? It's like, we're not perfect in that sense. No man is perfect, but we will make mistakes. But the point is we have a rubric. We have a reference base to keep order, to, to keep order by way of obedience. And, and with that, we will display consistency in healthy behavior, which collectively it would produce order. With this, we would display a, a, a discipline and self-awareness. These are all perfect examples of righteousness. These are perfect examples of orderly, godly people. Okay, we have discipline, we have self-awareness. Now, an immoral people or amoral people, by their nature, create chaos. Okay, and now this is due to their inconsistency of order. An immoral person or an amoral person who just doesn't believe in morality at all has no reference base. They have, they have no standard in which to, to go from. In that sense, they will have an inconsistency of order, and which is chaos. They will have constant chaos because they are working from their whims. They are working from their emotions or their feelings or their desires. And we understand as fallen men and women, our desires will lead us astray. And uh, so with this, we get uh, inconsistency of order and normalized practice of unhealthy behaviors. Okay, so a normalized practice of unhealthy behaviors. What is that? What are unhealthy behaviors? Narcissism, um, promiscuity, rampant drug abuse, okay, promotion of violence. These are unhealthy behaviors. And a normalized practice of them in a society creates chaos. You'll find sexual promiscuity, kamikaze identities. You, you see people just living like you know, it's their last day on earth. That's a kamikaze lifestyle. That's a kamikaze personality. That's something this type of immoral slash amoral culture produces because it is, it is a, a result of chaos, that which lacks order. So an inconsistency of order in a normalized practice of unhealthy behavior, you get sexual promiscuity, kamikaze-like personalities, and foolhardiness. You know, people think they can't lose. Their ish don't stink, these types. And then you get the other side of it too. You, you get the, the depressed, the melancholic, the, the lowly, insecure. You know, you get that other end of the spectrum. It goes both ways. 